Hello guys. Hi, Fang Peng. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, John. Yeah, hi, Fang Peng. Good to see you, John. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Hi, Chris. You want to share? Hi, good morning. Share screen? What? Huh? Huh? Chris? Yes. You want to share screen on it? Yes, of course. But I uh -huh. don't know how to do the double one where you can show the script and my face at the same time. <laughs> uh, which one? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. There's something like that where they can show both. No? <laughs> screen. Hi, yeah. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hey, uh, uh, Terence can can let the picture screen, uh, Terence. Yeah, hi, Frank. Yeah. Hi, morning. Hi, Frank. Morning, Frank. Oh. Yeah. Frank is uh, leading, ah. Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, Chris. Hello. Uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, we we meet him in the the bur 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 meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now and then. Now and then. <laughs> That's good. <you> know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Can I can try now, Chris? You wanna try? Uh okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah. I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I'm thinking you're chipping, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, same, same, <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, because uh, I see. Hi, Christopher. Long time no see. Yes, yes, long time. So it's good that we meet on Zoom at least. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yes, we need to find an occasion where we can get together. Yeah. Be, beside BTCP. <laughs> yeah, any occasion can do. Like, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So, your occasion, I'm going to see your new building. Uh. Yeah, that's why, but uh, we got no chance to open. Uh, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> can have a pre opening tour for, uh, for some <laughs> old folks like me. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know how many times we defer our opening already? <laughs> oh, is it lah? Oh uh, according to uh, government yeah. SOP. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, the government SOP is really corrupt. Uh -huh. 
already yeah uh, the church premises yeah but uh, yeah except for beautiful it's very nice yeah. i went to see except that we, we can we can we can meet that <laughs> so. <laughs> uh-huh. so now my anyway july i think it will be the time lah no? It moved from May to June, now to July. <laughs> oh, okay, because of the bomba lah. No, no, bomba done already. Bomba done in oh, May. Oh, bomba done already. Early May, yeah. Ah, because okay. of the M- MCO. <laughs> ah, alright. Okay. Yes, yes. A- any younger folks around? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hope they'll wake up. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm wondering where the... Oh, Taron at least is around the younger uh, generation. Uh, if not, don't worry. They will watch it on YouTube. You know? uh, They'll watch it on the one, you know, but which is... You know? <laughs> Hey, Chris, we are the younger ones. Yeah, yeah. We we are considered the younger ones. Eh? That's good. That's good. I I, I feel comfortable. <laughs> 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 Have you had your vaccination? Yes, thank God. Yes, uh, uh, they say Sinovac, so they say I've been injected with water. Lah. No, no, no side effect. <laughs> 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 Can't trust the Chinese vaccine, but I, I trust in God, not in the vaccine. Lah. <laughs> Kenneth, oh, good to see Kenneth here too. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, hi. Oh, Foran. Okay. Yes, good morning. Morning. Hi, morning. And Suntai is there? You like Hong? No, no, no. no Suntai no, no, is uh, elsewhere. Lai Hong is elsewhere. <laughs> oh, Lai Hong is elsewhere. That's <laughs> one yeah, 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 hi, Chris. Hey. Chris. Yeah, hi. Hey, you spoke last week, huh? Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep it going, yeah. Yeah. How are you keeping? Okay, I just they just asked me. I had my uh, vaccine. I had my vaccine, uh, the China vaccine. Oh, second dose or first dose? First dose lah. Second dose will be twenty nine. Oh, okay. Where yeah. do you get those? Ah, uh, in uh, okay. Now it's very near lah. K K K what lah? K K what? The Damasra Utama Medical Center lah. KPJ 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 KPJ. Yeah. Oh, so the hospital lah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so good are you ah? Uh? Yeah, they, they accelerated the, the, the program. La. The Lord know that I need also. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How is how is Hui En? Hui En got the AZAC and she was not well for two days. Yeah. She was what? Side effect? Uh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people have side effect on AZAC except the senior. Oh. Yeah. 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 The younger Just people my, have it bad. Yeah, yeah, my mother, my mother-in-law, 1991, yeah. nothing, she yeah. told yeah. her, it's like nothing happened to her. <laughs> yeah, that's why injected with water. La. <laughs> Don't know whether whether the government will trust them or not. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Chief about- Shipping, Chief, sorry, Shipping, your Kiang iPhone is trying to sign in, so can you sign out your Kiang iPhone? La? Huh? Shipping your iPhone. Oh, sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, I'm not that that angle, I'm just wondering. Oh, you want to angle? <laughs> Bingo, what do you say? Your okay. iPhone has not come in for five minutes already. Your can iPhone not no, connecting. Not connecting. Not connecting for five minutes or so. No, I just sign it. Other, you think if you're using it to each other, there'll be interference, you know? No, I'm not. I'm not signing in. I didn't sign in. Hey, there's, there's a can iPhone. Maybe it's oh, yeah, my yeah. automatic I... sign in. Uh. No, 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 no. I, I'm using... okay. Okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. Okay, bye. Yeah. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's my elder sister. Oh, okay, possible. Huh? <laughs> but very long time have not sang in yet. You know, it's been like hovering there for five minutes. I think it's wow. yours, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> hanging, so hanging, hanging. Yeah, yeah. Chris, how is Jungan in Australia? They are doing very well. Of course, Perth is quite safe, lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're enjoying the the outdoor on the weekend. Uh, plenty of places to go for the kids, lah. That's one thing I felt. One thing good, the Lord bless them, lah. Because mm-hmm. here we don't have many places safe that bring the kids to, lah. Outdoor, lah. Outdoor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there they got plenty of parks. Very nice park. Uh, free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is wonderful, lah. Mm-hmm. Going together, the family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you looking forward to go Hong Kong, lah? I heard you 
quickly accelerated your vaccine now. <laughs> you get your your passport, vaccine passport, like I go Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I have another baby to take care of here. Uh, oh, I, I know. What? Come Bring on. Bring along. Ah. <laughs> Can I carry you? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, too big, too big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. Okay, ten o'clock already. Can I can I ask a uh, uh, team? Can commit us in time of prayer before I pass the time to Frank? Tim? Yeah. Please do. Time to order fruits. Let us uh, quieten our hearts. Our Father, we are so grateful that we can gather this morning in your presence. Oh. Look. And though we are in separate homes, Lord, but we thank you, Lord, that uh, we can meet together knowing that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are one before you. So, Lord, as we come before you to worship you, we pray, Lord, that uh, our worship will be pleasing to you. Uh, Mold our hearts, Lord, during this time so that we more align to your will. Help us, Lord, to understand the plans that you have for us and help us, Lord, to praise you and to glorify you as best as we possibly can. For this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. It's always a, a great honor and a joy to come together to worship the Lord. Uh, and glad to see so many, uh, even though it's on Zoom. Um, we've been on Zoom for uh, over a year, almost one and a half year. And uh, still a bit of getting used to, yeah? Uh, talking to the screen instead of a real person. And yes, uh, this morning, a beautiful morning, and we rejoice for it's another day the Lord has made. But as we were talking this morning, there's still a big cloud that hangs over us. This COVID, always uh, the main topic of conversation, has caused uh, such havoc all over the world. And more than that, it has exposed the ugliness of world leaders and even just human as a whole. Stay home, stay safe, a new catchphrase and greeting. But we are thankful that many of us at Bangsa are not badly affected. But the reality and the full impact of all this lockdown, MCO, EMCO, CMCO, RMCO (laughs) is yet to be clearly seen. We are thankful uh, that we have God and we rejoice in knowing that our God is sovereign and almighty and we are his children and he will always watch over us. As all this uncertainty looms, we can still sing out loud and we need to be still and know he is God. So our first song, Be Still, and know that the Lord is in control. Be still, my soul. I won't be afraid, for you are here. You silence all my fear. I won't be afraid. You don't let go. Be still, my heart, and know I won't be afraid. Let's sing together this song, and be still and rejoice, and worship our Lord, who is in control of all things. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. of the Lord, the Holy One is
our next two song um, assures me every time I listen to it that when I am weak, I am strong because of Christ in me. To face not just worldly challenges that I have to face, but challenges in obeying Him and doing His will. I'd like to read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. I'll share this on the screen. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. We sing our next two songs, uh, which is You Say and Still. in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know
Frank, please unmute yourself. Oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Because of Christ in me, he gave me strength. Because of what Christ has done for me, we are able to be with God and call him Abba Father. Above all, our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Our next two songs, what a beautiful name and above all. You were the word at the beginning One with God, the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What oh, could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. Measure what you were crucified and laid behind a stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what took the fall and thought of me above all. As we remember what our Lord has done for us on the cross, and before we partake of the Lord's Supper, let me read to you uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 to 25. 
1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our soul. Let's give thanks for the break. Our Lord, Heavenly Father, we worship you for you are worthy. You are worthy for you are almighty and your love for us is beyond our understanding. And as we remember what you did for us on the cross to send your one and only son to die for us so that we can be reconciled to you, that our sins may be forgiven and that we may be called your children. Father, we thank you for this bread that represents the body that has been broken for us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give thanks for the cup. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for sending your son to us. And as we partake of this wine that represents the blood that has been shed for our sins, we can never really say how thankful we are for it would have been impossible for us to come before you father as this wine represents the blood and as we drink it we give you thanks in jesus name Pass this time now to uh, Andrew, who would uh, give the announcements and or give thanks for the offering. Thanks, Frank. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, for the announcement this week, uh, the offering, the account is uh, Maybank. The number is written up there. Um, if you are going to type online, uh, after you type, please take a snapshot and WhatsApp, either Tim or myself, for recording purposes for us to reconcile the accounts easily at the end of the month. Next slide, please, Terence. Today, we are privileged to hear from Chris, Chris Leong, Titus 3.7, by Grace Alone. Uh, it's been some time since we had met up with Chris, uh, so uh, looking forward to listening to his message this morning. Next slide. Next week, we'll have Boon Kun. Uh, he's going to talk about Christ alone, Matthew 16, 13 to 18. Next slide. Sunday School, Sunday school resumes this morning, uh, 11 a.m. on Zoom. Uh, next slide. Yes, uh, BGC Corporate Prayer for this month will be on the 22nd of June, 8.30 p.m. through Zoom. Uh, the link uh, will be sent to you via BGC communication uh, a day or two before that. Any, any other announcements, Terence? Nope, nope. Okay, let's, uh, let's pray and give thanks 
for the offering before I hand this time over to Chris. Shall we pray? Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this morning, Father, that we are so privileged to come before our Sovereign Lord and King. And Lord, to be reminded by the song, above all, because Father, you sent your Son down here on earth to take the fall because you always had us in mind. And so we want to thank you for all the works that you have done for salvation in our lives. We thank you all this are truly by grace and through faith alone. For certainly by works, none of us would be able to make it. So we thank you for the love that you have for each and every one of us. And Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming to you this morning in worship through offering as well. Father, we pray that Lord, all our offerings, Lord, will be blessed by you. And we pray, Father, that you would grant wisdom to the leadership so that, Father, we can use this offering to your glory and honour and according to your sovereign will. Thank you, Father, for we pray all this in your Son's most precious and holy name. Amen. Chris, over to you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that I've been given this opportunity to share a word with you all. Now, I do not want to come across like a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I'm a fellow brother. I'm a fellow traveler towards the journey that we are all in the journey that all us are going through. I, I also need to receive my vaccination. Right? Oh, you need to do that. All right? We face the same issue and the same trouble living in today's world. But we thank God. I thank God that the Lord has prepared us for this morning message. What the Lord has downloaded to me and what the Lord has shown me as I look into this word is being, uh, so to say, illustrated in the song, the second song that Frank has uh, have, uh Play before us. Frank, if afterward you if we got time, I would like you to play the song again. Four. Okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is wonderful. I think the Lord is already preparing our heart to receive what He to say to us. It's so vividly portrayed in the song. So let me share screen. Salvation by grace alone. All right. I would like to take it that we also like to overcome the distortion of grace. So as we look into the Titus, I felt that Titus have been able to help us overcome the two distortion of grace that is so prevalent throughout the history of the church. So let's look at this verse that is before us, the verses before us, title 3, verses 4 to 8, I highlighted the three prominent person in the salvation of you and I, of humankind, God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. Alright, so maybe we should all read it together. You can be already muted, so you can read it I, out loud, and where you are, so in the sense, you are participating with me. We, we are hearing the word of God together and reading the word of God together, okay? Let's do it, okay? One, two, three. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appear, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom we pour out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become as according to the hope of eternal life. This saying, saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good work. These things are excellent and profitable for people. 
All right, grace alone. Titus 3 verse 5 underline what have been taught from Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. I believe that, you know, Brother Sun Tai would have not missed out on this verse. All right, but Titus 3 5 informed that grace alone means that God saved. Forgive and save us not because of what we do, not because of our good works, the works of righteousness. It's through grace alone. Through grace alone, we receive forgiveness through Christ. Our sins are forgiven. We are declared righteous before we are justified. Restore with the Father, adopted to be children and heirs, and we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The true regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Wow, this is, we will unpack it further for you, the work of the triumph God in granting us grace. Through grace alone, we receive all this from the triumph God. Okay, so salvation, we all know it's a gift of God's grace that is received through faith. We are not saved by obeying a least so do and don't. The one, I think we there's no need for me to repeat here, because I think all those who attend Bangsa would be able to know that, but by grace through faith in Christ alone, our salvation is in God's hand. That's good news, that's the gospel. By grace alone, we obtain salvation in Christ. Is that all that Titus is teaching us about grace? There's more to than that, all right? Paul teaching on grace in Titus is more than this. We need to look at Titus chapter 2, verse 11, beyond uh, verses that we read to gain a wholesome understanding of grace. Without this passage, it will result in a distorted understanding of grace. The distortion of God's grace arises in every generation. Now, today, there's a hyper-grace movement that some of you are aware about that is taking us in the wrong direction. All right, let's read the chapter. All right, the Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. For the grace of God had appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us, grace training us to renounce ungodliness, ungodliness, ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-control, upright and godly life in the present age. Right? So a wholesome understanding of God, of God's grace is important. On one hand, there's a saving grace of God, saved by grace. On the other hand, is a sanctifying grace of God, growing in grace. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11 tells us, in Titus chapter 2, it tells us that the grace of God train us, instruct us how to live in light of the grace that we have received. Right? The grace that justifies everyone who trusts Jesus Christ as the Lord also train every believer in holiness. Right? Grace trains. Now, the Greek is a present active participle. I mean, training us is instructing us to continue to renounce a life of repenting from past habits past sinful patterns of life. And that is what they call ungodliness. I so verse 12 hinted at the Christian fight against the flesh in us. Now this morning, we not under unpack that. That is then unpacked for us in Roman. If you want, then you talk about what Paul is talking about. Ungodliness is the fight against the flesh in us that we need the grace of God to help us to overcome the flesh that is still in us. The flesh that did not die even though we have received new life in Christ. Right? Those who have been reconciled to the Holy God will not be satisfied to go on living as carnal Christian. That's the other way Paul is talking about a fleshy person in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and takes God's goodness and mercy for granted. Then he told us, he told us that not only to renounce ungodliness but also to fight against the world. Grace will equip and train us to live, to overcome the flesh in us, and also to overcome the worldly passion in the world, the last of threat, the pride of life, and so on. All right? So grace also oriented uh, 
desired action. Okay? Sound control. Upright and not be. So the effect of God's grace in our life to help us to live a sound controlled life. This is part of the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in Christian and involves self-imposed discipline and restraint. Though sin does indeed remain in Christian, it no longer reign in them. Neither is Satan. Great trained believer to control and enable us to rise above sin that is still around us. Upright in our relationship to others. The grace not only teaches us to live life of holiness, but also teaches us to live upright relationship with others. And finally, teach us to be godly in relationship with God, made in His image. Grace is to restore us. God saves us to restore us to become like Him again. Because we are made in the image of the Father. And we are to grow in Christ like the, the Son of God. Right? So, Paul is teaching Titus, therefore, to avoid the two distortion of grace as earlier taught by Jesus in the parable of the lost son. The youngest son, taking for granted the father grace gift to him and squandered it. So this is one abuse of grace, right? To abuse what God has entrusted to us. And today, a lot of Christians take the grace of God for granted. They just want God to bless them, bless them, but they never move on to live life that is pleasing to God. The older son failed to live by the abundant grace and riches of his father. The father said, everything I have is yours. But he lived like a slave in his father's house. He said, this many years I have slaved. The word is duloi. All right, I have saved. I slave you. I slave for you. Imagine. Imagine your son had to slave in your house. Wow, that is what he see himself. The older son do not know what it means to receive the abundant goodness that God has given. He do not know what it means to be a son to God. So he turning grace in a set of legalistic rule and forcing outward religious performances. Now, so these are the two extremes of grace that is facing us today. On one hand, those who are taking grace for granted. On the other hand, we reject grace as the principle of Christian living and turn grace in the set of legalistic rule. So Paul sought to overcome these two distortions of grace in these two passages that was before us. All right? On one hand, there's a legalism. Forgiveness is hidden anymore. You don't talk about it. Well, you are forgiven. That's it. Okay. Now you just perform. Okay. You must leave. All right. Come to church on time. Read your Bible. So it's all about doing, doing, doing. The Christian life has been reduced to a set of do and don't. On the other hand, if you forget how grace is to govern the way we live, not only being saved, is that there is a dependent, a kindness of God is being abused. Alright, so what's happening is that God is turned into a Santa Claus, the ATM machine, and believer become consumer, bless me, bless me mentality. I come to, to church so that God can bless me. I The reason why I come so that, you know, I receive. I'll be successful in life. I'll be healthy. I'll be free of all things that trouble the rest of the world. I'll be free from COVID. I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. So God becomes just a Santa Claus to dish out goodies for us. We come to God just to get goodies from God. All right. On the other hand, God is, to some Christian, God remains a wrathful, angry God. So the believer becomes like the older son. We don't know how to enjoy the presence of God. We don't know how to be joyful. We don't know how to rejoice. We don't know how to have the fullness of the grace of God in our life. 
Right, so these are the two major distortion of grace that Paul is seeking to address in these verses in Titus 2 verses 11 and 12 and Ephesians chapter 3 verses 4 to 8. All right, so how do we avoid falling into either of these distortion of grace? Paul basic ethical imperative, how we live a Christian is determining of what, who we are. Be what you already are. What we do follow from who we are. So the question before us if we are to not fall into distortion of grace is to recover the who am I? Who do I believe I am? That is, that's why the song is so powerful for me. Alright? Do I measure up? Then you say, remind me of who I am. What matter is what God thinks of me? What have I become? When I receive the grace of God, I believe what you say of me. What matter is everything you think of me? I will be still and know you are God. So, there is a correlation between Christian belief of who we are and Christian living. If we do not know who we are, and that's the starting point for living up the grace of God that we receive, then we will likely to go wrong in how we live up our Christian life. What we do or not do as the believer, as the recipient of the grace of God. All right? So we need to bring these two together. Be what we already are. Recover who are we now in Christ. And Paul always emphasized to the churches that he wrote to, many young churches. These are all young churches. Most of them are less than 10 years old all right, in their church history. Right? Sound belief must lead to sound living. And we must keep the two together. So furthermore, Paul added in two wider theological lenses to the other of two to help us live even a more holistic understanding of what grace is about. Who are we and what we do need to be governed by what God does and who God is. Are we going to look at this theme of God is a generous father? Now, there is a need for us to recover the teaching of God as a father. God as a generous God that acts in goodness and kindness to us. So, ultimately, what we do and how we live our life comes from knowing God. What he did, and even more important, knowing God, who he is. What we believe about God and what he has done for us. So, that's to summarize it, all right? This is the picture that we'll get if you do a more in-depth study of uh, Titus 2 and 3. That Titus talked about God being a savior. And he sent Jesus. He sent his spirit to regenerate and renew us. And Jesus Christ justified us. And his grace instructs us to live holy life. The picture that we get of this God, right? that he is holy, he is judged. Right? This is a picture of who God is. And that result in who we are now. Right? What God does result in who we are before we can talk. What are we to do? Right? We are declared righteous. We are made holy. We are saints. Like that is a song say. We are sons and daughters of God. We are given new nature. Even the believer in Corinth is called a saint. So can you say to one another, those of you who have somebody next to you, say, hey, I am saint and you are saint. All right? You and I are saints. That is the new identity. This is what God sees we are. We are saints in him. We have been made holy. It's not just a, you know, a, a, a clothing put over us. It's not like a, a piece of garment that put on us. That, but we are not holy, but we only put on the garment of holiness. No, no, no. We have been renewed. We have been given a new nature. We are transformed to become saints and no longer sinners. 
Now, if we see ourselves as believers that we are still sinners, we are in trouble. And some of us see ourselves still as sinners who still sin. Yes, but sin is also sin. But you must not see yourself as a sinner. Because God never sees us as sinner. In fact, there are not one time in the Bible, in the New Testament, where those who are saved are called sinners again. All right? You can look at it and tell me, is there any that, you know, is Christian addressed as sinner? No more. We are called saints. Even the words to say uh, Christian conduct uh, in, in Corinth, all right, they all address them as sin. They have been made holy. We are empowered being by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us generously and we have been renewed in Him. And that will enable us to live out our identity because we have been declared like this. We turn from living ungodly life. We forsake the life that is in the past. Now we live holy life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we live a life of daily repentance, renouncing the flesh and resisting the worldly passion. Now this is something that has not been taught. These days, I remember during my time, we have a book called by John White called The Fight. At that time I was reading, the book. why talk about Christian life at the fight? <laughs> All right. Now, now I realize that, you know, Grace taught us to continue to fight against the flesh that is still in us. Again, we don't have time to unpack what exactly this flesh in us. But we must differentiate the flesh in us with the new nature that we have. The new nature we have is saints. We are sons and daughters of God. Next one. All right? All right. Okay, God is generous. He sent Jesus. He gave his best. John 3.16 tells us that. He gave his only son. Now, we begin to see who God is. This is the belief in a God that will give his best for us. Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 say that. If he sent Jesus Christ to die for us, if Jesus died for us, will he withhold anything that's good? Because Jesus was sent by the Father, the only Son. And He gave us the Holy Spirit, pour out His Holy Spirit to regenerate us and renew us. And Christ justified us. God is incredibly gracious, loving and kind. He blesses. us. That's the word that is missed out in Genesis chapter 1. When the first thing that God did to man when He created man, in his image, he said, he blessed them. God, that's the first word that is pronounced on man. God blessed them. God is incredibly gracious. He prepared everything in the garden for man. He chose us to be his own people again. Sin had taken us away from God. But God redeemed us and chose us back. He paid the price and chose us to be his own people again. God the Father adopted us into his family. So we are God's own possession now. We are no longer nobody child. This is what our identity is. We no need to feel alone even though that is a feeling. But the fact is that we are not alone. We belong to God. We have full access to God. We have been made holy saints, no longer sinners, under the wrath of God. All right? Remember that this famous book written by the revivalist and theologian, Jonathan Edward, I believe. All right? Sinners in the hand of a wrathful God. Sinners in the hand of a wrathful God. Now, that is true. God remained wrathful, but to a sinner. But we are no longer sinner. We are saints. We are sons of Him. We have peace with God. The wrath of God fall on Jesus, His Son. And Jesus, His Son, paid it full for us and turned us into the children of God. 
And we are now called heirs of God. More than just that, we are son. We have been set free. We have been made heirs of God. Because we are partaker of the divine nature. We have a new nature in us. We have a new identity to become blessing bearer. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That is what Paul told the efficient Christian. Living in a very dark age as a minority in a powerful, ungodly, evil environment where idol worship was rampant. Paul said, you have been blessed with at least spiritual blessing. We have the recipient of the blessing of God. We become the carrier of God's glory. Why? That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul reminded the Christian in Corinth that they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple is where the glory of God is. So when we say we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we become the glory of carrier. The image of God being redeemed and we are now sons and daughters of God. Carrying the presence of God with us. The blessing of God rests on us. Now, we, what different does he know? What did make to you, brother and sister, if you know this is who you are? And what we are is because of what Jesus had done. That's because of what God had done. And what God done arise from the fact that he is a generous God to us. So that's why now, Paul said, in light of the three truths, who you are, what God has done, and who God is. Not only one aspect of the truth, but three truths to anchor us to do what we do is to live generous, self-giving life. We are blessed to bless. We are to devote ourselves to good work because we have been recipient of the grace of God. All right, so this is where we will end. All right, God is holy. God is generous. He sent his best. And God is asking us, give of your best because you are my son. You are my ass. You have much to bless others because I have poured out so much in you. Do you see you already have received? That is why there's a commentator who, who write of the book of Ephesians, the Epistle of Ephesians, be rich, be rich. We have been richly blessed by God because we are the heirs of God, the Father. All right, we live a life of significance. We live a life of security. As live a life of security and significance. We are no just a nobody. We are no longer the slave to sin. We are no longer sinners. And because of that, because of who we are, Paul urged them to live according to the truth of who we are, what God has done, and who God is. Uh, that is the anchor for us to experience grace and learn to give grace to others around us by giving of ourselves to others. Living generous, self-giving lifestyle. We are blessed to bless in this time of the pandemic. There's a tendency to look inward now. The concern is self-preservation. Now is the time for the Christian church to rise up and show that they are generous in giving to those who are suffering much more than us. We have received so much from God. We have received eternal life from God. We receive sonship from God. We have been heirs of God. We are the carrier of His glory. I say, give of yourself as my son. Live as my generous sons and daughter in a needy world. Do not hold back. That's why Paul encouraged the Christian in Crete to live generous and self-giving life. Be devoted to good work was mentioned three times in one chapter. Chapter 3 alone is mentioned three times that we are saved so that we might devote ourselves to 
Good night. So, dear brother and sister, that's all that I want to share with you. Uh, all right. Thanks. Sorry for the earlier interruption. If not, we could have ended a few minutes earlier. Uh, so, may we, dear brother and sister, this day know who we are. And if Ming Fook say you got time, then we can play the song. Yeah, can, 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 yeah, yeah, let's, uh... I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know
Yeah. Before I close in prayer, you know, I just want to share something that, uh, you know, very short, okay? Uh, you know, sometimes in life, we we just reflect and think whether um, we have done much, you know, have we failed, you know? And that's a question that uh, I used to ask God. I said, God, is my life a failure <laughs> sometimes, you know? Because uh, there's so many things that I want to do, but I just don't seem to be able to do it, you know? I don't know whether any of you have that kind of experience, you know? You reflect back uh, on, and you read news about, uh, you know, things that are happening and you wonder, you know, uh, to God and say, that, God, you know, have I done what you want me to do? Or or really, uh, is my life really worth, you know, calling me a good and faithful servant, you know? And sometimes we get thrown away because we look at the world standard and how people view faithfulness, how people view uh, the world, view success and all that. And then uh, you get depressed again and say that, oh God, uh, really, uh, have I met you know, certain uh, you know uh, standards that, that you gave? You know? And I believe that uh, grace is very important because um, it realigns us to know that uh, who we are, because what is really important is what God thinks of us, what not the world thinks of us. And I just want to end with uh, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. He said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And I think the, re- re- the, the response to grace is to ask God to help us do his will and to follow and to obey what he tells us to do. And I think uh, then I think we find meaning in life. Uh, then maybe you look at our life, uh, we won't compare it with other people. Uh, we just uh, know that uh, we have a journey with God and we want to fight them. We want to finish the race, we want to finish a good fight. You know? And that is uh, what I've learned you know, uh, in my own journey about grace. You know? not, not easy, I know, because sometimes we look at your friends who are doing so much better than you, other people who are flourishing, you know, the world, uh, the difficulties you face. But I think when we come and experience God's grace, we'll know that our journey is just what to do, what God has called us to do. And that is the most important thing. Shall we close the prayer? Yeah? Father, indeed, we want to thank you, Father, because you are a good God, a generous God, Lord, as we're reminded again today, Lord. Huh? We know, Lord, that everything we have comes from you, whether it's a, a lot or not much in this world, Lord. But Lord, we know that, Lord, that our inheritance in you is so secure, Lord, because there's so much more, Lord, for us in our lives, Lord, to look forward to. Maybe, Lord, be people who are generous, Lord, even though we might not have a lot in this world, or maybe we don't have enough of certain things in this world, Lord, because, Lord, you are an abundant God. Lord. You help us, Lord, to, to uh, be your salt of the earth, like the world, Lord, not just by our words, Lord, but by our deeds. Lord. Uh, let us be people, Lord, who are different so that the world can know, Lord, and see, Lord, that, Lord, indeed, Lord, we are your disciples, Lord. Huh? And in you, Lord, um, there is uh, abundance, Lord. Huh? Abundance of life, abundance of hope, abundance of joy, abundance of love, abundance of peace, Lord. Huh? So thank you again, Lord, for the reminder, Lord, these two weeks about our faith, Lord, in you. Again, Lord, huh? and the grace, Lord, that... Uh, that you have given to each one of us, Lord, and only by faith, Lord, uh, when we when we believe in you, Lord, huh, we will experience all these things, Lord. May those who do not know, know you, Lord, huh, uh, want to really, really um, put their faith in you, Lord, huh, because you are the only way, the only life, uh, and the everlasting God, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for uh, uh, to Chris and for those who uh signed in by Zoom and also by YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've